My name is Drew, and today we will be talking about the one card poker game and the reinforcement learning agent which we implemented. So in the one card poker game, we have two players, player one and player two. We decided to represent the two players by a superclass called the player superclass, from which the other subclasses inherit. So one such subclass is the learning player, which implements our reinforcement learning epsilon greedy algorithm. Another one is the fixed strategy player, which plays with a fixed strategy every time. It's a relatively good way to play in this one card poker game, but it's not optimal by any means. And then we have the human player class. So in the game, each player will be uh, anteing $1 into the pot to begin. So the pot now has $2 in it. Then player one and player two will each be dealt one card. The cards range from two to an ace. And here suit doesn't matter because there are only 13 possible cards and not the 52 that you would have in regular poker. The one card poker game drastically simplifies the game so that we could implement our algorithm on this. <clears throat> We represented each of the cards by a different number ranging from zero to 12. And essentially the game will go based on whichever card is higher will win. So the order of the game, player one and player two each ante $1. Player one, after seeing his or her card, will have the option to either check bidding $0 or bet $1 and, and raise the pot. In either case, player two can respond uh, based on his or her own card, based on his or her own strategy. So if player one checks, if player one bets zero dollars, then player two can either check or bet one dollar. If player two checks, then there's no extra money in the pot. There's just the two dollars from the ante. And whichever player has the higher card will re receive the two dollars in the pot. And that's a net profit of one dollar. If player one checks bets zero dollars and player two bets one dollar then player one will then have the option to respond to player two's raise player one can either call in which case the pot would have four dollars now total and whichever player had the higher card will receive uh, the four dollars back and a net profit of two or player one could fold in response to player two's uh, raise in that case Player two would receive the $3 in the pot for a net profit of $1. In the case that player one bets $1 and raises from the onset of the game, player two then has the option to either fold, bet $0, in which case player one would win the $3 in the pot, which is a $1 net profit, or player two can call the $1, in which case the pot would have $4, and now uh, it's whichever player has the higher card. So obviously, the magnitude of your, your card plays a large role in your strategy, and that's very important in what the reinforcement learning agent will learn. But in addition to that, the reinforcement learning agent has to take into consideration the, the full state of the game based on the actions of her opponent, which action will maximize the expected reward. And of course, in our Epsilon Greedy implementation, there is a certain probability equal to epsilon that player, that the learning agent will choose a random action. So uh, bet, bet, bet $1 or bet $0 with probability one half each. And that allows for some more exploration um, on the exploration versus exploitation spectrum. So that's an overview of the game. And I'm gonna run the code right now to give a sense of what it does. Um, we implemented different classes to make it work. We have a deal cards method, uh, a way to end the round, decide which player will win and, and allocate the uh, respective profits to each player's account. So we can keep track of monetary performance and also um, number of games won over total number of epochs. Uh, we have a training method which which takes our reinforcement learning agent epsilon greedy algorithm and it uh, creates a game between 
two, two players, which we can decide either train two learning agents against each other, which we did, or train one learning agent against the fixed strategy learning agent. And the fixed strategy learning agent plays with a very simple rule. He will bet one dollar with a probability equal to the likelihood that his or her opponent's card is lower than her own. So if the fixed strategy player has an ace, then the probability that the opponent's card is less than the ace is 100%. So in that case, it makes sense to always bid $1. In the, the opposite case, if the fixed strategy player is dealt a two, they would bet bit one dollar with zero probability. So um, and and everywhere in between, there's a spectrum. So there is a stochastic nature to the fixed strategy players playing, but it's completely unpredictable. Uh, only predictable in those edge cases. Uh, and right now the code is running, but um, there's a we're, we're training it over a large number of epochs. So. All right, we are back and we are ready to play against the fully trained reinforcement learning agent. So let's play as optimally as we can to gauge how smart this reinforcement learning agent really is. We get a nine. A nine is relatively high in value. So um, we're going to bid one power, even though player one uh, checked. In that case, player one didn't have a high enough card uh player one folded so we won one dollar net we won uh, the three dollars in the pot which was a net profit of one dollar okay we have a six player one didn't bid one dollars uh in that case because player one didn't bid i'm gonna guess that player one has a lower card and i'm gonna raise uh, yes, player one had a four, so we win. Now we have two dollars. Okay, we have a ten. Player one didn't bid. We have to. We have to bid. Player one folded, and we won another dollar. Player one did not bid again. I think we will raise with an eight. And player one has been getting some bad luck for that hand. So now we have a net profit of four dollars. We have a 10, and player one once again did not bid. Uh, player one has been getting some very bad luck this game. Okay, in this case, we have a three. Player one raised us. We're going to fold. So player one had a king that time. Now it's $4 still. Player one raised us, and we have a six. To preserve our capital, I think the optimal move here is to fold. And fold indeed i did player one had the queen so that was the right move now we have a net profit of three dollars like this player one player one raised us and we have a nine a nine is a good card but the fact that player one raised us is a little bit alarming uh there's still a g given that player one raised us i would assume that player one only has a seven or larger based on uh, player one strategy so i'm gonna risk it but i would assume that player one has a speed so i'm gonna call and indeed player one had a 10 so player one won so now we have a net profit of one dollar uh player one bid but we have a 10 this time so definitely call player one had an eight so we win two dollars now we have a net profit of three and on the last hand we have a jack so we're gonna raise by one and player one folded so we end the game with a net profit of four so clearly uh this reinforcement learning agent plays very well uh i think it lacks an element of uh randomness that a real human poker player would have the unpredictability um being able to maximize the probabilities but also balance uh, a predictable strategy to uh, make your opponent as unsure as possible. Overall, though, 
I think we implemented a great reinforcement learning agent. It fares very well against the fixed strategy learning agent, <clears throat> and we are very proud of our work. So thank you so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.